It's been a whole six months, I know too damn long, and this fitting to be a good and long pop snark because I deeply owe y'all. Happy whack history, y'all. This is a key discussion, a respectful debate where you can agree, disagree, as long as you can articulate in full sentences. Let's engage and have a good time. Ooh, I am drinking. <laughs> oh, bitch, we are back to the Moscato. Can I finally pronounce this correctly? Bar Tenora. Uh, the blue bottle, the one my mom told me about because she be watching Love and Hip Hop. Girl, we all be influenced at some point in time. Clink, 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 clink. Oh, that's been such a long time. Did it feel good? As good as I look? <laughs> Aziz, best known for Master of None on Netflix, a show where he's a pretty aggy character in season two, but that Thanksgiving episode written by Lena Waithe, a black woman, is just so damn masterful, I rewatch it for joy. There was an expose written on the website babe.net who reached out to a woman who had gone on a date with Aziz and left in shambles. Twitter, the platform that is entirely not for intellectual respectful debates because someone always takes it too far or too personal, had to grapple with what this article meant in the age of the feminist Me Too movement. My opinion is this article was a piece of bad journalism that did a real disservice to the young lady at the center of the story and lost the potential to push forward a productive but hard conversation, not only on consent, but how we talk about sex, like realistically, in real life, IRL, because so many of us have a very limited language when it comes to sex. Convo around this got so mucky because we love to talk about consent in absolutes of yes and no, but in praxis, no one wants a man who at every step of the way is asking, are you okay? You sure you wanna do this? You can say no. Is that a yes? Wait, wait, are you okay? During sex. Don't have drunk sex? <laughs> Some of us like it and are fully capable of not being sober and having consensual sex. Aziz is definitely a creep in this situation, but the power dynamics that would make this a rape or a sexual assault just are not present for me. Is it victim blaming to say that she should have left? That simply him being a celebrity doesn't skew the power to the point where she could not have just stay dressed. When you do something and bend because the person is a celebrity without them holding that over your head, because there is no account of Aziz telling her that he could or implying that he would if she didn't agree with him, then don't we have to review our own consciousness and how we idolize people? I do think there is a conversation to be had and I have had it about you having the right to change your mind at any point and getting up and going. This is messy, but I keep going back to it really should have been better written and edited to handle the complexities of the story broaches. It should have been better researched and facts more rigorously verified. Not that I believe the young lady was lying at all, but that the writer focused on all the wrong details. That they drank white wine instead of red wine. That her outfit was indeed cute because she saw a picture of it and babe.net reached out to the girl, she didn't reach out to them. They could have handled her story with way more care, but they were after the clicks and well, here we are. Hello my loves, I am rooting for us. <laughs> Monique calling for a protest because Netflix offered her 500K for a comedy special when the very not funny white woman Amy Schumer got like what, 11 million? But only after she called them out for not paying her on par to her male counterparts. Turns out DeRay Davis received 5 million and yeah, Monique is not wrong in being upset with Netflix to the point of calling them out, but her strategy in calling for a protest, well, that was wrong. Ain't nobody protesting Netflix, a platform that gives plenty of creators of color leverage and is a cheap alternative to overpriced cable. That's access for poor communities and this is a matter of personal gain, sis. You do not call for protests or boycotts for your own personal wealth. But besides this being the wrong strategy, it's sad how quickly we can so self-righteously turn against a black woman. I keep hearing, she should make her own way. What does that even mean? I think people just like saying that when Monique has long addressed how even black people have sold her out. Will Packer ruined being Mary Jane, so man on that. John Murray, I really don't know what he does besides going on all these free car marketing trips. I did one last year that he was on, and there's like a whole clique of black influencers who do the car trip circuit, and they ain't got no digital reach, but they just be commenting on each other's pictures. And girl, it's, just, it's a swindle. A free trip is nice, but you don't don't make money doing those, which is why I don't constantly do them. Back to Monique, she has every right to expect to be paid on par with her counterparts. Tuck in how much you hate black women for a moment. You do not have to be a fan of her comedy. That's not what this is about. It's about how black women are constantly at the bottom and treated like we should simply be thankful for crumbs. And no, it's not gratifying that Wanda Sykes got offered even less and then had to go find another network. That is not how you solve the problem. 
Stop telling black women to be thankful for the opportunity to beg. No. Matthew knows in an interview said that Beyonce wouldn't be a success if she wasn't light skinned. For starters, that is not a direct or accurate quote. In an interview with Ebony Magazine promoting his new book, claiming that the HBCU Fisk University had a brown paper bag test. That is, it, if you were darker than the paper bag, you would not be accepted to the school but somehow he was let in. That led to a discussion on how colorism was ingrained in him as a child and how he used to date mainly white women or very high complexion black women that looked white, believing that his ex-wife Tina, now Larson, was a white woman when he first met her, LOL. <laughs> the journalist asked Matthew if he's noticed the same patterns of colorism in the music industry and he lumped both his daughters, Beyonce and Solange, with Nicki Minaj, Rihanna and Mariah Carey as proof and therefore highlighting the pattern of colorism favoring lighter skinned black women. The problem with Matthew saying this now is that he's trying to profit off of colorism when he was the one behind it. I've been promising to do a video on colorism for forever, ever, bruh, but quickly so we can get on with this. We so often conflate colorism to simply being about the color of one's skin when it's an oversimplified term for how we view the standard of beauty on a spectrum of Europeanness. That the closer one leans to European features, whether it's hair texture, eye color, facial features, or skin color, that is revered as beautiful and they're absolutely is a pretty privilege. That's why you see deeper toned women in Hollywood who still don't look like the women in your black ass family. Why suddenly the silky hair, and I love to joke about baby hairs forever and a day, but how we treat that as beautiful while decrying kinkier textured hair as unkempt. Same beast, we just lack the nomenclature and therefore language to put the conversation within our grasp. So here goes Matthew Knowles trying to sell books by being fake woke when he was an active player in disenfranchising Latoya and Latavia to benefit his light, bright daughter. Remember when we didn't really care for Beyonce? because we caught the colorism BS that was at play in Destiny's Child and she was always thinking about being Creole. <laughs> they were very, very aware of everything before it was there. I want to clear it up to everybody out there who doesn't know, but Latoya and I, we never quit the group. Never even said anything about, about quitting, quitting the group. Uh, Matthew Knowles was this really intense, controlling, business-minded guy who had driven the two girls out of the All of the bad seeds are now out of Destiny's Child. Beyonce is famous because her talent is unmatched. Yes, plenty of light-skinned biddies done came and gone. But we can discuss a system that gives them access over deeper toned women. Matthew just ain't the one to carry that conversation. And is Kanye gonna be playing the same stuff at 50, admitting how he chose his mating partner based on the European standard of beauty? in order to engineer the aesthetics of his own family. Guess we gotta wait till 2038. <laughs> the godfather of all godfathers, 87 year old Quincy Mother Effin Jones gave two wow, wow interviews to GQ and Vulture. Just wow and the cool candor and nonchalance of Quincy who has lived quite the expansive life, has a modern legacy that is unmatched in any scope. And my man sat there, drank a smoothie and spilled all the tea. Admitting he found Michael Jackson be obsessed with plastic surgery. Then in the same vein as Matthew Knowles claimed that his own infatuation with white women was an expression of rage and protest against white people like okay sis <laughs> I really I really do love that everyone wants a grandpa like Quincy even though he snubbed his nose at every last one of your black ass grandmas okay Quincy loved white women so much she gave a pass to Lena how do you say her name Reffenstahl a white woman who befriended Adolf Hitler and her film career greatly benefited from the support of Hitler's third Reich government <laughs> Quincy cool, but I won't ever condone the support of a Nazi or even a Nazi sympathizer. It's a note for me, sir. Quincy mentioned in passing that Marlo Brandon was sticking his dick in everything, including James Baldwin and Richard Pryor, and we all took a collective gasp because we forgot about how much Pryor used to do skits about how much he liked some good ass and dick. Next I move, uh, Paul was with me once when I first fucked my first fuck. <laughs> And he's been holding that over my head for two years. I fucked the fat. I just want to say it now so nobody else can tell. I, I liked it. I would have married him, but he had to go away and get an operation. His ex-wife, who married the man twice, twice, confirmed, noting that he was doped up on quaaludes. I quote, if you did enough cocaine, you'd fuck a radiator and send it flowers in the morning. A good laugh I didn't even know I needed. I don't know why Rain Pryor, Richard Pryor's daughter, and is it okay if I say she funny looking? <laughs> Sorry. Anywho, I don't know why she would insert herself into this. What child knows all the details of their parents' sex life? Were you there? 
in the room. Kim K rocked some cornrows with beads on the end and called them Bo Derek braids. And once again, the family that has mastered the art of social currency got y'all mad and paying them too much damn attention for no reason. Adds to list, do a clear, concise video on the actual definition of appropriation because this ain't it. If she went to the stylist and said, I want Bo Derek braids, which is a thing, that works for her. Some of us go to the stylist and say, I want lemonade braids rather than I want Fulani style braids to get the same damn thing. And it really ain't that deep because there is no official name for them. And if anything, it's an opportunity to learn her something. Because most of us have no clue where the hairstyles we rock derive from past the pop culture reference that brought them into the mainstream and T-Ways. In other news, Kim's third child is a girl. Her and Kanye named Chicago because they got enough money to do things like that and none of our judgment matters. And Kylie Jenner managed to keep her pregnancy a secret in a family that publicizes everything for the coins. You cannot deny that the Kardashian-Jenner clan definitely loves each other. And we also can't deny that Kylie really doesn't watch the news as she named her daughter Stormy at a time when a porn star named Stormy is all up and down the news because she was paid off by Trump. Let us pray for the Kardashian-Jenner legacy that has now become a family of black children, black daughters, unlike the whitening of Diana Ross's offspring. <laughs> I would like to take a moment to massage my own ego and say I've been looking real cute with 2018 aesthetically pleasing while I pass on a very informative messages. <laughs> like how the rush and the confirmation of conservative judges is something you have the power to stop. Go watch my video with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law that breaks down why you should care and how the lifetime appointment of conservative federal judges negatively impacts the livelihood of black and brown communities. Click that eye, girl. Click that eye. Kendrick Lamar and SZA released a delightfully Afro-futuristic video for the Black Panther soundtrack single, All the Stars. Visually, I love it, though it is very sad to hear that they did not get the permission of Lena Iris Victor to feature her artwork and I see a whole lot of, speaking of Victor, Victor Omar Diop influence throughout the video. Pay black artists, bruh! Otherwise, I am very happy though, low key, that the only hotep negro I love, the Ankrite Kendrick, did not lean too heavily on the Kemet ancient Egyptian imagery because the history, art, and culture of Africa is vast, intelligent, and beautiful. So, shout out to the brown skinned women and the reverence paid well in exposure <laughs> to the African art, but really pay them in dollars for real, for real. Let me know if it'd be worth my while to do a video breaking down the influence of African art and imagery in the video. The Kendrick and TDE produced Black Panther soundtrack was also released last week. Mm -hmm. There is a few bobs and again the Hotep Alright Kendrick must have had a really life-changing experience in South Africa because he loves all things Zulu and has four South African artists featured on the album, though they missed a real opportunity to showcase a breadth of African artists on the album. At minimum, I'm surprised Wizkid wasn't on the album. They could have remixed some Ethio picks into a real minor hip-hop bot. We could have got some French African rhythms instead of future rapping la di da di da slab on my knob. Like, what was that? For why? There's enough Africans working in the American music scene to have made this happen, so womp womp. Oprah gave a riveting speech at the 2018 Golden Globes before being honored with the Lifetime Achievement Award, and I know I'm so late on this topic, but because we are so desperate, immediately social media was in a flurry with hot takes about Oprah running in 2020. Full stop. Nasus. First, we do not love, support, or respect black women in this country, especially not those who look like Oprah, read all our aunties and moms that Quincy Jones turns his noses up at. Society would not do the hard work required to support a black woman successfully running for the presidency. So us wanting to see Oprah run, that race is a cop out because we believe she is wealthy enough to insulate herself from the level of trauma that would be thrown at her. We do not have to follow the stupid white people into promoting unqualified people into roles of authority. Let the orange popsicle melt away and leave their hands sticky He's not ours. And let's not forget, Oprah opened a school in South Africa because as she claims, African Americans don't value education. And you expect her to do what for poor people? No, I didn't just say black sis, huh, as president. Cardi B defends offset use of the word queer after he rapped, I cannot vibe with queers. In some song I totally do not care about. Cardi backs up Offset, a man from the black gay capital of Atlanta, Georgia. She backs him up in his claims of not knowing that queer meant gay people. Because in the 21st century, we regularly use the word queer to define something as weird or strange, never mind LGBTQ. Girl, please drop this light skin obsessed man. He is using you. Don't fall into the trap of Instagram relationship goals. Don't be a Sierra. He has three kids and don't even know how to lie good. In much more interesting news, Cardi B did an interview with Zendaya and says people shouldn't question if she's black because clearly two white people fucking didn't make this. And I think the latter is a very actual valid point because Cardi B is clearly not white. However, 
white and black are not the only races that exist. And if we were to pull up Cardi B's early interviews, like when DJ Vlad questioned her use of the word nigga, she did not say, well, I'm black. Why would you ask me that question? Instead, something that like is like, a lingo, like even if I want to stop saying it, I really can't stop saying it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Like it seems like it's something that is so normal, which is bad, but like it is what it is. And if it comes to the fact that she's Latina, you know, like I'm, my 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 parents, my my father's side, we're Spanish, we're Hispanic, and everything. But it's like where do them Spanish people came from? Where them Latina people came from? They mix people, you know? We mix with, with uh, African, European, uh, what is it, uh, mulatic and everything. And it's just like, what, 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 what am I considered? And at the end of the day, like Latinos and Hispanic, they are considered a minority. If we're saying she's black because her mother's Trinidadian, why doesn't she reference that side of her family? Besides there being a large Venezuelan community in Trinidad, I do not need Cardi to be black to like or support her. It is a thing in hip hop urban culture for people to want to co-opt a loosely adjacent black identity as if that verifies their talent. But Cardi could be just like Bruno. They could go on a little racially ambiguous tour together. I kid, I can't, it's gonna be lit as like, and I will have my happy ass eating or singing and dancing along. And as long as Cardi and calling black women roaches is speaking up about deep Deeper tone black women being overlooked stays genuine as fuck. I do not need to claim her as a representation of black women, but I won't stop y'all from doing so. Just be careful about what you claim is radical, lest you set yourself up for disappointment when your favorites to live don't have the same racial or political ideology as you. Barack and Michelle Obama unveiled their official portraits for the National Portrait Gallery, a Smithsonian Museum that sits on the National Mall. These were not the official White House portraits. Please, people, tuck in your own culture this just for a second. Barack's portrait was done by Candy Wiley, one of my faves, and I thought he was pretty well known and a popular artist. He's shown up all over pop culture mainstream. Michelle's portrait was by Amy Sherald. Both Barack and Michelle picked the artist, and this kind of art is not meant to be liked by the general public. Michelle picked an artist who has a very strong and what can be considered challenging aesthetic because it forces you to reevaluate how you perceive art. Michelle's features being exaggerated are stylistic of Amy's work. I am very happy to see two African American artists, and especially an African American a woman who hadn't yet crossed over into the mainstream have their work featured in a Smithsonian. The art is meant to be challenging. It is not meant to fit into the mainstream visual appeal, but to shift the way we perceive and think about things. It is supposed to strike a discourse. And as Picasso said, everybody says that she does not look like it, but that does not make any difference. She will. Woo! Gotta go watch Black Panther, bitch! This pop star took a lot of work, sis, but I did it for y'all after taking this six month hiatus. If you made it to the end, I hope you commented along, had a good key, agreed, disagreed, and had a good time. Think a little deeper about the pop culture we consume. If you would like to make a one time donation, you could do that on Cash App or become a monthly patron on Patreon. As always, pillows, teas, and more on shopsmartbrongirl.com. Thumbs up, it definitely helps. Comment a trillion times, and if you're new here, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Do